त्रिवेणी कला एवं पुरातत्व संग्रहालय संस्कृति विभाग मध्य प्रदेश शासन के द्वारा श्री कृष्ण जन्माष्टमी के पावन अवसर पर जो व्याख्यान माला आयोजित की गई है उसका आज का विषय है हमारे आज के व्याख्यान का विषय है श्री कृष्ण इन कथकली तथा हमारे आज के वक्ता हैं डॉक्टर सी पी उन्नी कृष्णन श्री कृष्ण की व्याप्ति संपूर्ण सृष्टि में और भारत देश में विविध रूपों में प्राप्त होती है सुदूर अंचल केरल में भी श्री कृष्ण विविध स्वरूपों में विविध आख्यानों में देखे जा सकते हैं कथकली कृष्ण नाट्यम आदि कई नाट्य परंपराएं हैं जो केरल से ओरिजिनेट होती हैं और श्री कृष्ण को समर्पित हैं हमारे आज के वक्ता कथकली के कलाकार हैं गुरु हैं तथा एक बहुत ही उच्च स्तर के शुद्धार्थी अध्येता भी हैं डॉक्टर सी पी उन्नी कृष्णन ने विशेष योग्यता के साथ अपना बी एस सी ऑनर्स पूर्ण किया तथा ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी में आपने स्नातकोत्तर प्रथम स्थान के साथ पूर्ण किया तत्पश्चात सी सी एम टी मुंबई से वेदांत में विशेष योग्यता के साथ आपने डिप्लोमा और आई सी एस मद्रास से फाइन आर्ट्स में डिप्लोमा पूर्ण किया आपको पी एच डी अवार्ड की गई वर्ष 2013 में केरल कला मंडलम मानद विश्वविद्यालय के द्वारा आपकी डॉक्टरल थीसिस का विषय था बॉडी काइनेटिक्स एंड द एस्थेटिक्स ऑफ कथकली विष्णु सोहनी मेमोरियल फुलब्राइट अवार्ड मेरिट स्कॉलरशिप सीनियर रिसर्च फेलोशिप सी एस आई आर के द्वारा और मानव संसाधन मंत्रालय के द्वारा आपने प्राप्त की है इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल कल्चर्स मद्रास से आपको ऑनर ऑफ स्कॉलरशिप प्राप्त हुआ तथा श्री शंकराचार्य लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट अवार्ड के आप प्राप्त करता रहे श्री शंकरा स्कूल ऑफ डांस कालड़ी से आपके 27 से अधिक महत्वपूर्ण शोध पत्र प्रकाशित हो चुके हैं जिनमें अ विंडो टू कथकली करनंगल ओरु पटनम लर्निंग टू लर्न इज लर्निंग अ लाइफ स्टाइल तथा नाट्य मुकुलम आदि मुख्य हैं आप पीएचडी डिग्री स्टूडेंट्स के गाइड के रूप में भी कार्यरत हैं मद्रास एमजी और श्री शंकरा कालड़ी यूनिवर्सिटी के लिए कई सांस्कृतिक तथा अकादमिक प्रतिनिधि मंडलों का नेतृत्व डॉक्टर सी पी उन्नी कृष्णन के द्वारा किया जा चुका है ये प्रतिनिधि मंडल विभिन्न देशों में भ्रमण कर यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स यूनाइटेड किंगडम सिंगापुर पोलैंड नीदरलैंड आदि भरत मुनि के नाट्यशास्त्र पर आधारित ऑडियो कैसेट्स भी आपकी जारी की गई हैं द मास्टर रिकॉर्डिंग कंपनी चेन्नई के द्वारा तो आज के हमारे सम्माननीय वक्ता डॉक्टर सी पी उन्नी कृष्णन को मैं आमंत्रित करती हूँ कृपया वे अपना व्याख्यान प्रस्तुत करें धन्यवाद namaskaram to all right at the onset let me offer my apologies for not being able to report in time as given per the schedule because of problems of the internet which were out of my hands also so here i offer myself to all the krishna bhaktas let me thank the organizers of the lalit or program i am invited in person by dr bhavana vyas it should be on behalf of the triveni sangrahalaya ujjain i must to speak 
and make a presentation on a topic called Krishna in Kathakali. Kathakali is a globally known art form. It's more like a dance drama and we will see how Krishna is placed in the entire gamut of Kathakali. I'll be presenting a slide which will tell us what the contents of today's presentation would be like and we'll go through it one by one within the allotted time. It would be all mostly pictures because Kathakali is more of a colorful visual art form. There's no point in talking about it. I have to just show you certain important scenes and tell you where Krishna is placed. So we go over to the next slide. Contents for today's presentation will be the concept of Krishna in brief, as we know um, in the state of Kerala or um, mostly among the Kathakali aspirants. Then uh, why Krishna is a minor character in Kathakali. Uh, we'll go through that. It's interesting. Oh, Krishna is a minor character. We cannot do many stories without Krishna. We'll see that. Then the Aharya that is the costumes, facial makeup, and ornaments. How Krishna is presented as an important initiator of the Kathakali show. We say Purapada, which would be something like uh, the second part of Purvarankam, mentioned in Bharata's Natya Shastra, a prelude to a play. That would be the apt English translation, uh, I feel, would be for Purvarankam. Then we will see the most important scenes from the most important stories, which we call Atakatha, the story written to be enacted on the stage. How Krishna is placed in those areas, the important sequences where Krishna appears. We'll go in this order. Uh, so we go over to the concept of Krishna uh, through the next slide. Krishna, often referred to as one of the ten incarnations of Vishnu, in fact, cannot be restricted to any simple manifested form. Meticulously, the great poet Jayadeva has not included Krishna in the briefing of the Deshavatara, that is the ten incarnations of Lord Vishnu. In his work, the famous work, Geda Govinda. He takes Krishna as a supreme self itself. That is Ishwara himself or itself or herself in whichever we may take. We'll go over to see further what exactly are the areas from where Krishna is looked upon as a great phenomenon by the people all over the world. Of course, I do underline people who understand the concept of Krishna, the greatness of Krishna, the phenomenon, the cosmic phenomenon called Krishna. We'll go over to the next slide. It's one of the most popular deities of our Puranic pantheon, a child god of a pastoral tribe, a great warrior a saintly preacher in action and a very, very dear deity loved by people of all age groups, people of all genders and through all ages. This saga is an amalgamation of many disparate elements in one harmonious and coherent whole. The synonym Narayana is used only to denote Krishna among all the deities in our pantheon. This is based on the philosophy that Krishna is a 
Paripurna Avatara, a complete incarnation of Narayana. And Narayana is considered as the source of even Vishnu, the creator. Krishna is referred to as Achyuta. According to Adi Shankaracharya's commentary on the thousand names of Vishnu, Achyuta means one who will never lose his inherent nature and powers. The name also means immovable, unchangeable, and as such is used for the one who is without the six transformations beginning with birth. So great is Lord Krishna. Well-known scholar Narayana Ayanga states the meaning of the Sanskrit word Narayana can be traced back to the laws of Manu, also known as the Manu Smriti, a Dharma Shastra text known to all. According to the definitions in the Vedic literature, Narayana is also defined as the son of the primeval man and supreme being who is the foundation of all men. And some scholars say not just men of all beings. So these are debatable and different concepts according to the scholars analyzing a concept from different angles. Yeah, our uh, next uh, task is to see why Krishna is considered as a minor character in Pratikali. Uh, I, I can't say that these are exactly the reasons, but uh, I have coined some hypothesis from um, dealing with the techniques of Kathakali, the concepts and culture of Kathakali. We'll uh, just examine and in an overall pattern, we'll just see uh, why Krishna is considered as a minor character. It's interesting. If we trace the earlier evolution, the, the origin and earlier evolution of Kathakali, it works out in such a manner that the substratum for the formation of Kathakali was because of uh, anti-movement by the Tamburan of Kottaragara or the southern part of Kerala against Manavedan, who was Zamorin, the local ruler of Kolikod, that is Malabar side, northern part of Kerala. He patronized Krishna Nagam based on the text called Krishna Gedi, and it seems Krishna Gedi was a kind of reinterpretation of Ged Govindam. Even now we have Krishna Nagam um, in the precincts of the great Viruvayur temple. It's more of a offering to the God there are eight different episodes and people offer each episode to see that um, their ills go off and what they earn for, they get like uh, children getting married, somebody getting a job, somebody earning better or um, rather somebody getting out of certain bodily diseases, mental diseases and so on. So overall an offering kind of thing. And therefore, it can be only stories of Krishna and it is full of Krishna. But Kathakali became something totally different. We will see what it is and what it was like and why Krishna technically became a less important character in the entire scenario, but with his own striking significance in almost all stories which are related to Mahabharata and Bhagavatam. Uh, recalling the origin of Kathakali against the Zamorin's Krishnatam, the Kottarakara Tamburan of southern Kerala came out with Ramanatam. That means against Krishnatam. But some scholars say Ramanatam was already there and uh, this Tamparan or the ruler made eight different stories for eight different 
there is just like what is uh, followed in Krishnatham, uh, some kind of a rivalry which existed um, right at the beginning of the dawn of evolution, we may say it's a, a nature's rule. So let's not um, worry about the enmity between the people. But later, Kote to Tambran, this Kotem is from the northern Malabar, that is the northern half of Kerala. He structured Kathakali based on selected stories from Mahabharata. And Mahabharata has heroes, anti-heroes, villainous people, heroines, and Krishna also playing right through the travakale of the entire big story of Dharma and Adharma. The stories selected were Karmiravatam and Kalagayavatam as well as Subhadra Haranam and Kalyana Sauvantikam. The heroes in these stories in the order as we consider a Yudhishthira, then comes Arjuna and then comes Bhima. All these characters are important, but you can see the word of Vatham, which means slaying or killing. Some ill character or some demonic character is killed by these people, but nothing moves smooth without Krishna's intervention. That is the beauty of the play. Now, these are model stories taught in all schools so that the students, when they grow up and become professionals, they'll be able to accept characters and stories from any walk of life. At this juncture, I must remember late Ramasri Nelliyod Vasudevan Nambudri, who left us a month and a half ago, perhaps. He made a story with Krishna and Gobikas. No villain, no anti-hero, nothing much more softer, more on the basis of the Rasa Krida. It is more like a dance rather than more like a Nakya or where more Abhinaya is involved. A great work indeed. But again, I'm telling you, Krishna is not left by all these people who have come through the culture of the Indian epics as well as Adhikali. Uh, I think uh, except in Kalagaya Vadham, Krishna plays a very significant role. The stories in full length presentations cannot be completed in the absence of Krishna. Of course, there is one story fully played where Krishna is present through, but Krishna is not on the stage at all. You'll we'll see that. These are all interesting aspects of Krishna in Kathakali. I would uh, prefer to summarize the hypothesis this way. Krishna, being the direct incarnation of Narayana, he has to work as a live substratum and a catalyst in the growth of the stories which we refer to in the earliest life. Therefore, he cannot be restricted to any defined level of hierarchical protocols in the casting of characters in Kathakali. Whether it's a senior person or junior person, whatever it is, the presence of Krishna is very important. We'll be examining some of the important pictures representing various scenes, giving just a line of comment on the photograph for you, the people who are really with Krishna can think about and later gave me more ideas also. So we are proceeding to the story side, marking that Krishna is right through the, how long, how big is not the question. He is indispensable even in this art. I don't know whether somebody would like to, uh, in, in the later years, take up this as a project for their uh, dissertation work of for the post-graduation or PhD work, it would be interesting. There is much more to add. I'm compressing it within the time that is given to me. Um, of course, with the fear that there are few more things to be completed and I should be able to do it fairly within time. Okay, so we'll proceed.
this is the Ahirya of Krishna. Uh, the Pitambaram is represented by a yellowish orange tinted clothing, which comes more like a waist clothing, the skirty part of it. The Uttariyam or the made shawls with the puffy or the floral ends and a green one too. The coat that is worn is deep blue, sometimes it is black also. The face is green representing a royal sattvic character. Of course, I'm not going into the names and details of all the Ahirya structures. And what we call it the Pili Tirimuti, the crown or the head here, is quite known. It's a universal one, a more cone-like structure with peacock fill feathers right on top, all encompassing all the colors. And this Krishna is presented as the character or the form in the opening sequence called Purapada. We'll just see that there is nothing to explain. We'll just see through that. This is Potana Moksham, Krishna in absentia. In this sequence, Krishna doesn't appear at all as a character. It is the small, very little infant Krishna. To kill Krishna, Kamsa sends the demonic lady, Potana, who, when she arrives near where Krishna stays, Ambadi, she turns herself into a beautiful damsel and enters the place where Krishna is residing. She sees all around and is enamored by the beauty of nature, the peacock, the flowers, and all what is beautiful in nature. And she comes closer to Krishna and finds that she is, he is sleeping and looks at Krishna with the mind of a mother. The story, if we rewind, goes to say that Bhutana is the incarnation of Ratna Mala, who was King Mahabali's daughter. She, when saw the young, Vamana wanted to take him closer to her bosom and breastfeed him. Vamana, having understood this, had already granted a boon that he will manage this when he comes in onto the earth as incarnated Krishna. This episode is important from that point of view and Krishna is not on the stage. Udana comes closer, first decided not to kill Krishna and go back, but realized that if she goes back, she would have to die in Kamsa's hands. She feels, wouldn't it be better that if I go to the other world, the blessings of Krishna, she breastfeeds happily, but soon her vital powers began to get weakened by Krishna drinking the milk and ultimately after a physical struggle, she sees the form of the Almighty, the Lord Narayana and just dissolves into that eternal power, the point of moksham, salvation. Story is Guru Dakshina. Krishna and Balarama are taken to Santibani's Vidyalaya. 
by Nandagobar or Vasudeva and they offer their Dakshina right at the beginning to commence their Vidya or education. And Sandhyapani introduces Sudama who was already there and also his wife is assured in to take care of all of them. Once Sandhyapani's wife requested Krishna to collect some firewood as it was all exhausted. Along with Sudama, he goes to the jungle where they had to meet so many tough situations. I'm not going into the elaboration of the story as most of you know it. But there is one sequence where uh, the jungle man, the Kiratha, meets Krishna and he is driven away <clears throat> using force. And finally, Krishna returns to Santipani's house, who actually went in to find out what happened to the boys, Sudama and Krishna. And he was very happy when he could find them. He affectionately brought them home. Krishna and Sudama came to the Guru Patni and at her feet kept the bundles of the firewood and they were blessed. Kamsavadham or slaying of Kamsa is a name of the Atikada, the play, where Krishna shows entire strength of an incarnation as a socially conscious person, compassionate to his devotees and quite deadly to the nasty ones. Here we see Akrura arriving at Krishna's place and requesting them to come to Kamsa's palace and together they travel in a chariot. On the way, Kubja, the hunchback, comes and requests Krishna to bless her. She gives some sandal paste and he blesses her and suddenly the hunchback turns into a beautiful damsel quite compassionate to the devotees. On the way, Balarama and Krishna meet the washerman who takes Kamsa's newly made dress, the washed and newly prepared dress, to Kamsa's palace. They just wanted to take him round and see what happens. They requested that one or two bits of clothes may be given to them. He refuses and starts abusing them. Finally, in a tussle, the story says he is driven away and some story says he is destroyed. And wearing Kamsa's clothings, they prepare themselves to go and meet Kamsa. The story continues, the people who were gathering all around were watching as to what would happen if these two small boys come closer to Kamsa who is so mighty and powerful. Kamsa had actually kept two wrestlers by name Chanura and Murtika. They went and blocked the way of Krishna and Balarama and after a quick Tussle, both of them were destroyed. Still going forward, Kuvalaya Pitam, the mighty tusker, and two of its Mahals objected Krishna and Balarama, rather obstructed them, and said they can't go forward unless they prove their might. They pulled out the tusk and enter into a heavy fight with the Mahouts, at the end of which the Mahouts also get killed. And then they continue their journey to meet Kamsa.
towards the end, which most probably is the last scene in the Atagada or the play, uh, Kamsa encountering Balarama and Krishna after quite a tough fight, very easily, very quickly, finally, they subdue Kamsa and Kamsa says farewell to this world. He bids farewell to the world. Since it is with the hands of the Almighty Lord, even this death has to be considered as some kind of a moksha. Santana Gopalam is a story in which two important life lessons are taught. One to Arjuna, not to become egoistic, and to the Brahmin that Krishna is not a human being as such, seen to many, but Narayana himself. He is one who is invincible and nothing is impossible to Narayana. The devotee must have full confidence in the form in which he is offering himself as a devotee, the form to which he himself is offering as a devotee. So the Brahmin who has lost eight children comes into the place where Krishna and Arjuna are sitting and chatting in a very person mood. And he says that when Krishna and Valadama, such mighty powers are there, how come that a poor Brahmin like me has to face this kind of a treacherous fate, losing eight children one by one? Krishna keeps quiet, not responding to Brahman at all. But Arjuna offers himself and says that he will say the next child. At the same time, if he fails, he says that along with the great Bhav Gandhivam, he would jump into the fire and finish his life. Brahmana, though was happy, ultimately wants him to make promise, remembering his father Indra, Arjuna's father Indra. Then brother Yudhishthira, who is a dharmishta, and lastly also Krishna, because Brahmin, this particular Brahmin knew that ultimately Krishna alone can save him. The story goes that way and um, the ninth child's dead body also was not seen after it was born. Arjuna was jumping closer into the fire. Krishna stops him. They together travel to the worlds. Finally meets the Ananta Shain who is in the Vaiguntha and there all the children are there. The children are brought back and returned to Brahman, who blesses both Arjuna and Krishna, begging for forgiveness for having uttered quite harsh words at both of them when he lost the ninth child also. So everything ends fine, whereby Arjuna understanding that without Krishna, he is nothing. If Arjuna is Nara, Krishna is Narayana. Nara and Narayana cannot be separated ultimately in the functioned, functioning world. The story ends happily and it seems that um, this sort of Adhagali play when offered in a temple, uh, people who have got problems with issues with children, or uh, problems of not conceiving, all such problems will be solved if this is offered. It's a belief I just made as an addendum to this entire presentation.
Muchela Vrattam doesn't need any introduction or elaboration. It is globally known. Among almost all people, especially among the Krishna Bhaktas, Kuchela being forced by his wife, sheer poverty, she says, why don't you go and meet your bosom pal, Krishna, who is luxuriously living. He may be able to help us. Children are many. All of them are under heavy poverty, not even able to have one time food a day. So, not very much happy about it. Kuchela Sudama goes, meets Krishna who excels him in all pomp and glory. And they were doing their normal conversation, recalling the childhood days, how the Guru taught them, how they were punished for small things, but with all affection. Finally, Krishna says that, you know that I am a person who gets hungry very soon. People call me really a glutton. So, Kuchela says, I have nothing with me. But he had carried a small bundle of beaten rice, which was kept in his armpit. Krishna spots this, takes it, opens it, and had one gulp in him. The second gulp was also going in, almost went in. The third gulp was about to be taken when wife Rukmini prevents him and says that, Lord, are you forgetting what you are doing? Almost all the wealth has gone from here to Kuchela's place. Now if you consume the third one also, I will have to become a maid servant to Kuchela's wife. Isn't that bad? Krishna says, I didn't uh, exactly think of all that. Out of my love, absolutely unbiased love to my devotee, to my friend, Sudama, I forgot everything. Anyway, don't worry. It is absolutely right for chaste women to advise their husbands in right time. I do accept that. Then, after a small conversation, Sudama leaves with the pain of separation. But the story ends to say that Sudama couldn't even recognize the place. Five children all decked in heavy jewelry, and the small hut had turned into a palace with a big garden, etc. This is Krishna. This is Narayana Krishna, who just showers blessings. You have to just surrender to him. And the rest is taken care of by the Lord. Emiravadham actually means slaying of the demonic power by name Kirmira, but the exact strength of the story is in the sequence where Yudhishthira, Draupadi and brothers along with the people who went to the jungle so that king will look after them. But it was so difficult that Dharmaputra, Yudhishthira was not able to feed even a single person. He was in total dismay. And at that time, Sri Krishna visits. When Yudhishthira goes even to the extent of asking, Oh Lord, are you not ashamed to say that your devotee like me is in such a pathetic situation? This really moves Krishna. And when all his anger and wrath and desperation to certain extent, because the devotee is touched badly. He assures in cosmic power, the Vishnu Chakra. And Chakra says that 
Lord, give me an order. I'll go and dry up even the oceans and order the mountains. Leave alone the cover of us. So Krishna says, what is to be done? Yudhishthira says, no Lord, I don't want such a destruction at all. You be with us and help us. Please do send back this great power. It is so powerful, I can't stand it. So the mighty power slowly vanishes and Krishna says, okay, now let us find out the solution. We will definitely be able to find out. And the story goes to go on to say what happened later. I'm not elaborating that part. It's only the point where Krishna comes. Every point Krishna has to come in and move that sequence. Otherwise, there is some kind of a incompletion. Rajasuyam is exactly a yaga which is hosted by, or rather which was hosted by Yudhishthira after he gained all the wealth that he had lost. But at that time, there were two powerful people, Jarasandha and Shishupala. Jarasandha was a tough king. You can see uh, in the first photograph, the huge figure with a big crown is Jarasandha. The other one is Shishupala, who is seen in the slightly smaller form of the figure. Shishupala was a person who went on accusing Krishna. And his mother had requested Krishna, please be kind. Don't destroy him if he says something. So Krishna says, I will wait for 101 times. The next one, if he utters, that will be the end. This is the background of the story. The story begins with Jarasandha being approached by Krishna and the Pandava princes, namely Bhima, Arjuna and Yudhishthira and the guise of Brahmins. And Jarasandha was a very, very generous king would give anything people ask, especially if they are Brahmins. So Krishna plays the trick rightly here, knowing Jarasandha's weakness. They appear there as Brahmins and they request that he should fight with them. Jarasandha had all the doubts, but as he promised, the fight ensued and during which they revealed their right forms. Bhima kills Jarasandha but unable to do it properly, Krishna helps. Because Jarasandha has to be literally torn and put in a reverse manner. So the two pieces come in reverse manner. One part of the body with the head faces the other part at the end where the feet are so that he doesn't come back into the form again. This was a blessing given to him. And after that, Shishupala got quite wild. Such a great man was tricked and killed. So he comes out and reaches the place where Krishna is seated in a high throne in all great reverence and Yudhishthira is offering the puja. Shishupala comes and starts swearing Krishna. He waits till he completes 101 and when that was over, he says Shishupala, I have kept my promise. Now it is time for me to act and be ready to leave this world. And with this chakra, the veil, Shishupala is also given moksha. In the story Duryodhana Vatham, that is slaying of Duryodhana, which is an important episode in the Mahabharata. Of course, all the Kauravas are killed. There are two scenes where Krishna becomes important character as a very good friend, an understanding companion, an excellent ambassador, 
a very good debater at the same time capable of showing his might when required a tit for tat game is quite easy with krishna the dwapara yuga purusha i would like to underline now the scenes which are seen as photographs here are krishna as a ambassador or sort of an emissary ready to go as requested by yudhishthira to meet duryodhana and discuss a compromise to avoid battle but draupadi says krishna look at my undone hair this was pulled by dushasana in the open court where all grand masters were sitting everybody kept telling that dharma will win i do not know only you know about it and you are the person who saved me from the brutal clutches of dushasana who literally dragged me on the floor when i was not physically fit enough even to come out now you decide because remember bhima had really taken a very strong vow told draupadi that this hair will be done back into its normal position only after i smear this with dushasana's blood so if that all has to come into practice if that has to be realized krishna look at my open hair kesham idu kanduni keshavagamikanam that is the only area where she underlines look at my hair remember the vow and then you proceed anyway krishna proceeds out of discussions go on and finally duryodhana says not even a needle tip space will be given to the pandavas and they enter into real warfare of words talking about their ancestry and ultimately duryodhana says that you will be tied down and he calls dushasana who comes with a rope to tie down krishna but unfortunately they couldn't make out what happened they fell down unconscious and krishna showed his cosmic form the vishwarupa he goes blessing them because that is the duty of the lord their karma is coming to an end so they are blessed but the battle has to go through as the yuga dharma says and the great god vanishes as they come back to their senses to find the lord is missing you can find the lord only when you look into it if you search all around you don't find him this is the lesson that the devotees must get watching this particular scene Ito Upadesham is shown as a sequence by itself as a 40-45 minutes episode. It also comes as a part of the Mahabharata story as such. I think I shouldn't venture to say anything about Ito Upadesham or the significance of that. All of you understand. All the entire world, even business management study groups, their course contains bhagavad gita as a text so i'm not going to say anything about it just say that krishna as a great yogi as a great philosopher as a great narmishta appears in the gita upadesham sequence wherein he literally pulls out the despondent arjuna to a state of a bright warrior removing all his confusions so this great philosopher a personification of wisdom par excellence and practitioner of dharma a very very relevant dynamic conceptual form for anyone 
through all ages and may this lord be with all of us and bless us to have more sessions like this discuss more on the greatness and glory of the lord and make sure that he will guide us through the tough pandemic situation even this will get over let us continue in the path of our karma let the result come as such perfection of karma can only result in a perfect result prayers for all of you om namo narayanaya om shri krishnaaya namaha